Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Sofan, and in this video, we are taking a beginner's look at the skills, abilities, strategies, and starter decks for Narbash. So, ladies and gentlemen, Narbash is best suited as a tanky support. So, with that said, open your Select a Deck screen and go with Starter Deck Tank Physical Damage. That is definitely by far the best way for you to utilize Narbash's abilities. So make sure to come up here, toggle off suggestions, because we aren't going to be using the uh, suggestions that they are using here. So what we are going to do is start off with a health potion, a mana potion, and a scout's ward. That is going to be the basis for a lot of starter builds here, and you are really no different. Right off the bat, we're going to start off with a little bit of beginner strategy, just so that you can use proper proper strategy. So we can see here that the, our friendly team is not going for the red buff. Otherwise, you could really help your team out with the red buff. The thing now might be heading over there, so we can certainly help him out with that. No, he's not. So there you go. Always help out your team with the red or blue camps. So preferably you would like to... Preferably you would like to... Oh, no last hit. Lane with a ADC or a carry. A ranged hero that uh, really benefits well from from getting that power in the early game so that you can simply let them do their thing. The very first ability we are going for here is his right click. It's called Thunk. He throws his drumstick that deals 80 physical damage and stuns the enemy for 0.9 seconds. Uh, why are we going for that? Simply because it really, really helps out with securing kills from your friendly team that comes over and tries to kill this Grim. Per se. So that is why that stun can really be very, very, very useful to secure that kill and get that power. The second ability that we went for was his, his Q, and that is his March ability. It grants Narbash and nearby allies 160 movement speed, uh, that again can really help with securing kills. You can empower your team to simply move faster and hopefully kill the enemy. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm just trying to focus on getting these last hits. You can see there that you get 150 more card power if you do that than other than if you were just to not do that. So the Scout Sword you saw me place down right there. I would prefer to actually place it up here in this side, but the uh, Grim is doing a good job of forcing us back. As a as a beginner with uh, n with all by your lonesome here in this lane. I would not go past this midpoint here. Always stand on this edge so that you can see if anybody's coming and get an extra eye for anybody trying to come your way. I'm just simply standing back here, trying to just keep an eye on this and see how this lane goes. So the next ability that we went for was the last one here, was his Song of My People. It is a aura that grants six health per second to nearby nearby allies, and is a is a well, it's it's an okay way of healing your friendlies. The issue is that it takes a lot of mana. It really really takes a lot of mana, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna stun this Grim. I don't really want him to. Be, um, to be attacking my my scout sword, but again, that's can't, not much we can do against that Grim. We are just here getting these last hits, taking a few hits from this Grim, but that is okay. As you can see, we have 770, not too, too bad. What you ultimately want to do is freeze your lane. What it means is all of these, all of these little minions here, you want them right here so that you can really easily uh, farm up in, in lane and get a good good amount of card power in this early game. This is really, really safe. I, people can't really, can't really come up and uh, do very much to me because I'm safe by my tower. 
and as in terms of any combinations with um you know any any good synergistic com combinations with uh, with Narbash, not really. Um, you have your Q that increases your your movement speed, so that you can really get um, good ganks from the you know from from friendly heroes. But I mean your 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 right click is a is a stun, um, and you can really just use that to knock people out of ultimates, knock them from doing important important abilities or stop them just as they're trying to get away. That's really kind of the only way that um, Narbash can really be of any kind of combo or combo ability. So the last ability we have is his ultimate. Crash, bang, boom. It is a very cool ultimate where he uses his drums, creates a large area of effect around him that slows the enemies and deals uh, 405 physical damage over three seconds. That 200 max movement speed slow is quite significant. However, what it doesn't say is that it also is applied to you. You are slowed while you're going to town on, on going to town on your drums. So that is something that they don't really mention here. So the out of the first six card power, we are going to get our Lord's Ward. What this does is it gives us two. Two wards, but they're different wards. So that first ward that Grim could see, and he could easily attack it, but instead, what these shadow wards do with this Lord's Ward is it makes them go invisible. What these invisible wards are very good for is, well, simply going invisible and providing a good source of vision for your team that's pretty safe. The only way that the enemy team is capable of destroying them is that they have their own shadow wards that reveals your wards and then they have to attack it and kill it. Vision as a support or any hero really is very strong as it enables you to, through vision, save your friendly team from, from damage, from death even, uh, without using any abilities just vision. So that is why it's very, very important to use your wards. And again, this, this, um, get this <laughs> Decker is being a little aggressive here, standing way up here and, or way over there and eh, not being the safest that she really should be. So there we go. As in terms of upgrading your abilities, you can see that I have upgraded my right click thunk three times. Why is that? A, it, it decreases the cooldown, B, it increases the damage, and C, it increases the stun duration. Now, that stun duration, you would, you would probably think as being quite powerful, and it indeed is. The longer that you can stun, stun the enemy, is, it would be absolutely uh, very important, because if you can stun somebody for that split second longer, and really enable and it really enable your friendly team to, say, use a very, you know, use their ultimate just in time to, to kill them, that is good. So that is why you definitely want to focus on your right click much more than anything else. At this point, it it is definitely probably more beneficial for me to be with my team. So once we get three card power here, we will go back and spend them and start being with our team just a bit more here. Trying to focus on these last hits, get that power, and then we can go back. So I realize that I m messed up just a bit here. We would have preferably not gone for these two upgrades, and in fact have gone for this next card. I made a little boo-boo. Hopefully it's not that serious. Why would I have preferred to go on with this Amulet of the Veteran? Because in these early engagements, the damage that you get from the upgrades on the Amulet of the Veteran and that little bit of health are is much more powerful than anything else you could get. Being able to last hit more, get that card power faster, and also on these rotations that are very important here, these ganks in the early game, is crucial to getting the advantage in the early game. Damage on the support and tank heroes um, should really only be done in the early game to get that to get that advantage. As you can see, I got that last hit quite easily there. And uh, if we were able to upgrade um, upgrade them further, even earlier, we probably would be at three additional card power than what we are at already. 
just from getting that damage in the early game. And that little bit of health that is very, very powerful um, is definitely something there. So please uh, take that into account here. I'm going to try to stun my... Um, stun this Greystone so that he, he doesn't really have much time to focus on my... Um, on my Gideon there. And as you can see, that war lets us know that this um, Rampage is coming here. So let's see what we can do. Um, I want to stun him. Hopefully we can do something here. I'm gonna use my March ability. No, not much. The Grux might be able to pull him back, but I don't think much is gonna happen because um, of the powerful regen on that, on the Rampage. Trying to be as helpful. You could see my thought process there. Trying to save my friendly team. Trying to be as helpful to them as possible. Instead of trying to be, you know, that clutch damage dealer. That, uh, you know, changes the course of a battle. Because that's simply just not how Narbash is tuned. That's not what his kit is for. Um, it's for much, much different things. So, there, that Kalari tried to... <laughs> tried to... Uh, get me with his dagger, but I got him with his stun. So this is what his E ability looks like. You can see that there's a green kind of aura around him. And it does use quite a bit of mana per second, but you have to use it very situationally. You really should only use it as a toggle ability. It is a toggle ability, but I mean, I mean that in the sense where you only want to toggle it for a very brief, brief periods of time. That is definitely the best way to use it. You don't want to completely destroy your mana um, when you try to use it to get that health back. Just simply use it for a little bit of top-ups here and there to help your team. So something to think about as well is this Grux has his pull. He could very easily pull this Grim out from his tower and and leave him vulnerable to damage. Now with my right click, I have a stun. So he could use his pull, and then I could chain that into my stun, which then would give us a significant amount of time to take down that um, rock. So here we go, let's uh, go in here. Let's showcase his uh, ultimate here. I'm gonna have to use my right click. Can I secure the kill? Yes, I can. There you go, is with that um, there you go. I'm gonna have to be careful though. I am using my E a lot. And there you go. There's a stun that we, I could very much have used. Um, I should be able to use my right click very soon. Oh, and I get the last hit. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there is that thunk that we upgraded a lot um, just for that for that damage, that cooldown reduction. If we didn't upgrade it fully, we wouldn't have been able to use it there because our, it wouldn't be off cooldown. I wouldn't have been able to use it in time. Exactly why we chose to upgrade that right click. And if we didn't do this, my boo-boo, um, if we did these instead, we would have had this major strike already and have been able to do that much more damage ladies and gentlemen. So we would have been much more effective in that team fight. That is exactly why you wanted to upgrade this fully before these. It's okay. Chrono is very strong on him. Mana is very essential to casters in the early game. So not the biggest boo-boo, but hey, um, still worked out. So here is, ooh, this Richter. Can I do anything? Very nice pull. Let's use our ultimate here to hopefully slow down these guys so we can, yeah. So let's use my right click here to stun this Decker. Look at that damage from the right click. Exactly why we upgraded that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, his E is very situational. It's very hard to really, to really get strong use out of it because it, it takes so much mana because it is, because, yeah, it's it's really hard to get very good use out of it. Um, you, we're going to focus on our Q above our E. Our E will be last, um, unless we are focusing on a lot of mana in our build, unless we do um, some complementary um, health aura cards, it's hard to really utilize his E in a strong Fashion. So that is why we're going for our Q instead, just so that we can can be more effective for our team um, as possible. So I want you to see how easy it is for these last hits. Um, look at that, 85 damage on our 
basic attacks will make it very easy to get these last hits. Um, before, we had to wait to the absolute split second to get these last hits, but now we can play pretty safe and just wait till they're about, you know, just a touch under um, certain health. So there, I was a little bit premature, but we should be able to do something like that. Now, we should have put down our ward, so I could, could have seen this decker come, so let's put that ward down there and make sure that we are alerted to any more enemies coming in. So let's see how much... Oh, I missed my right click. Just wanted to showcase how much damage we could do there. So here's this Grim trying to be... Nobody expected to come right on top of them, so that is why you always want to go right along this edge here, because usually they're not... You know, usually the enemy is not coming up and looking like this um, when they're trying to gank you from behind. Oh, so this Grux missed his pull. I wanted you guys to see how we can chain our crowd control um, very, uh, very effectively. He would have pulled them right to us. I could have stunned them further. Or when that Decker was trying to, trying to run away, we could have um, stunned her very easily and then used our ultimate to further crowd control them. Um, away. So we can see our right lane is getting pushed up quite a bit, so we'll have to return and spend these seven card power. So here is the finished amulet of the veteran. 300 health would have been very nice there in the early game, but I just did a little bit of a boo-boo. Now after these, we want to go into our tank. So what we have to do is we have to look at the enemy team and see what kind of damage they deal. Physical, 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 energy, energy. Now, Decker's a support. I'm not too worried about her. So one physical, or one energy, sorry, to three physical. So we definitely have to focus on physical armor here. So we have two tuned barriers, one with more guard and one with more health. Now, health is by far um, stronger in the to give you effective HP in the early game. So we have to go for this tempered plate here because health before you need to get about 800 more additional health um, in order for guard to actually increase your effective HP. Just how the math works. So there's a tempered plate for that 200 health. We're now sitting at 500 plus health. So once we finish off the tempered plate, then that guard will actually really start to increase our effective HP. Okay, so we have this Feng Mao coming in here from the side, not sure to what I can do here. I might have just actually secured my own death. Yes, I did. So I tried to help out that Feng Mao, but uh, yeah, I secured my own death. Not the smartest thing there to do. Play it safe. That thing now was certainly safe enough, so that was my bad. So there we go. We used three previous card power to get this greater health. Now we are finished. So, oh no. Okay, good. Woo! Almost discarded that. So, there's our first tanky card. We're actually going to go into the next tanky card. The next one is going to be another tempered plate, but we won't fully upgrade it. We will save um, the, you can see at the bottom there, it has two two-point uh, guard upgrades. We're gonna save that for the late game. We're just gonna get it and then get that three-point health. One thing you should take into account um, is that his Q, his march also affects ally minions so right now you can see that well there's only three so i will save it actually for this back group here and i'll quickly run over here use my q to really get the his minions going so we have a group big group to push this tower with here so they so do have this um this gideon and a uh, gideon this gr grim and kalari not much this Decronite two supports are going to be able to do, so uh, hopefully she rotates away and we can at least get, keep this pushed and hopefully a ally can come and rotate. Alright, so we have a enemy sandwich here. Ooh, very, very close. I might try to help out this... Ooh, no. So, we got two for one. That's okay. Um, so now we need to get pushing here. Wanted to try to show you the power of, uh, of Narbash when he can come in from behind on an enemy team and really utilize his crowd control to, <laughs> to really affect how they play. So here is a enemy tower that's getting pushed 
up quite a bit. I want to use my march here to get these minions moving faster so we can push this tower, hopefully take it down before the enemy can rotate here. I always place a ward off to the side when you push a tower. As you can see, we have two down there uh, ready to tell us if the enemy is coming. Here's this Grim, and this, um, ooh, we could actually rotate mid and try to sandwich the enemy, but they should be able to get away before we get there. So we're going to leave that be and rotate. Always stay with our team as a support. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen, victory. Just with the constant pressure against the enemy team, able to secure kills there. I just killed two of the enemy team. Uh, just by using my stun, to stun a Rampage before he left, he used his leap to get out, and my ultimate to secure a slow-moving Kalari and, uh, and able to kill her. So let's go through the full build so that you know what cards to use and when. So here is the build order. Make sure that you toggle off those suggestions so that you can use the cards in a more proficient manner. Um, the suggestions doesn't it is not as effective as the build could be so you start off with your health potion mana potion and your scouts ward make sure to place your scouts ward so that you can give vision for your team and hopefully save their lives that's really the biggest part there after that you go for the lord's ward but remember don't upgrade it like i did don't upgrade that lord's ward we're gonna save those upgrades for later don't upgrade the Lord's Ward, just get it and replace your Scout's Ward. Next, you go into the Amulet of the Veteran. All of that damage is going to be very, very powerful in the early game. Uh, when you're only hitting for 45, an additional, uh, what is that? An additional 46 damage is tons. That's basically doubling your damage. It's really, really quite powerful. So that damage is going to enable you to get last hits much much easier be a much stronger force in any ganks that happen um, on, on the enemy team or just in team fights that do happen in the early game plus that 300 health just by fully upgrading that amulet of the veteran is very strong because people are only doing 50 to 100 um, damage for the basic attacks and casters they're really not getting that much um, damage in the early game 300 health goes a long way so there you go. That is why we get that. It is. It does get replaced later on though. So after that, we go into our tanky cards. Now remember that there are two, which are actually right here, that have more health than guard. You want that health because you need about a bonus 800 health in order for armor to actually start when the math is applied to increase your effective H. If they had a little bar that said effective HP, you would actually be able to see what upgrades would increase it, but they don't. So these two up, uh, cards right here that have the more health, you want those first. Remember, take into account what damage type the enemy is doing. In our game, we only had one true energy damage DPS and then three dam uh, physical damage heroes. So we were going to go with these two tempered plates here and just not upgrade those two guard upgrades in this one till very end so you would get these two cards later upgrading this one fully upgrading this one only with this greater health and then leaving the two the two point guards out then we go into the pendulum of lords that health the chrono and the mana will be very very strong on um on narbash the chrono so you can use that really powerful stun on your right click much faster and that health of course we're trying to be a tank the mana once we start getting some some more mana we'll be able to use our e our healing ability much more frequently after this pendulum of lords then <coughs> then we go into um these two in this game we would have gone for one of these tuned barriers this tuned barrier right here uh, with the more health than barrier simply because we don't need that barrier since there's only one energy damage hero. So we would have gone for this one that had the more health and we actually would not have gone for this tuned barrier. We would have kept the amulet of the veteran and leave the build like that. The build would have been the Lord's Ward into the amulet of the veteran into our tempered plate with more health into the other tempered plate only that three greater health upgrade into the pendulum of lords 
and then into this tempered tuned barrier with the health. Now, if say there was three, um, if there was two physical damage DPS um, and two energy damage DPS, of, like if there was a fairly good balance between the two, we would have gotten these four cards here, all of our tanky plates and barriers, and the last one would have replaced the Amulet of the, of the Veteran, so that in that scenario, the build would have been Lord's Ward, Pendulum of Lords, and these four cards. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully um, it also brings you success as well. Please let me know down in the comments if you found this beginner, beginner's guide helpful, and then I hopefully showcased Narbash to you effectively. He is a monster at controlling the enemy team. If you use your, your right click, your thunk, uh, to really stun the enemy in key scenarios to maybe add on additional, you know, like the Decker had her stun and then the uh, Grux had his silence and then we could have thrown our our uh, stun right after that. Really, that would have totally immobilized the enemy and made them able to do pretty much nothing. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Please like the video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it. Please share it with the community. So I more people can learn about Narbash, and of course subscribe. If you found it helpful or you simply enjoyed the video, please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. Until next time, stay positive and optimistic.